Hey guys, Leo once again, and of course, today I have the Asus Tough Gaming GeForce RTX 5070 Ti, the OC model to be exact. The third most powerful or capable GPU in the RTX 50 lineup, and one that I think is the most appreciated or rather the least objected to GPU in the series thus far. Compared to its predecessor, it offers the second largest performance leap, only bested by the transition from the RTX 4090 to the 5090. That being said, what I have here is the Tough Gaming model. And for that, you get a better cooler than you would on the Prime model, for instance. And what I assume is a higher power limit and in addition to better components. If that means anything to you, I can't know. What I do know, however, is that the Tough Gaming model works in both black and white builds. And I've used it now in two such PC builds, which I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys later on. That being said, pricing for this card is unknown at the moment. Locally, the Asus Prime version, a lesser card of course, retails for about 2399 while the Tough Gaming, I'm told, should be about 25999 I'm not able to find this card on Amazon, but on Newegg, it's a toasty $1,000 US dollars, which is a far cry, of course, from the $750 US dollars NVIDIA said the 5070 Ti would cost at launch. That aside, much like the ASUS Prime RTX 5080 I reviewed earlier, the Tough Gaming OC card overclocks relatively well. However, unlike the Prime 5080, you can overdo it with the GPU clocks and fail to recover. On the 5080 Prime, any clock that I could crash the GPU with couldn't be reached because the power cap kicks in long before the said clock is reached. On the Tough Gaming 5070 Ti, however, this isn't the case and as such, the most I could apply was a 460MHz clock boost, which led to in-game clocks of about 3295, but usually between 3247 and I would say about 3277. The memory proved to be just as capable as on the RTX 5080 but artificially limited to 17 giga transactions per second, when nothing above this would apply. Despite this, the ICs are rated at 28 gigabits per second, so being able to reach 34 gigabits per second is rather impressive. A 21% overclock and just over one terabyte of memory bandwidth in total for the GPU. In as far as power draw is concerned, the Tough Gaming RTX 5070 Ti can only be boosted by around 10%, and as such, the highest power draw I saw around games was about 320 watts which is not bad given the kind of performance it delivered at the elevated clock frequencies and power budget. With all that said, I think it's time to move on to what actually matters and why you are here, which is actually the benchmarks. Testing, of course, was done on the AMD Ryzen 9 9950X, cooled by the Corsair Titan RX LCD 360mm AIO. The motherboard used was the ASUS ROG Strix B850A Gaming Wi-Fi, paired with the Corsair Dominator Titanium Memory, and powered by the Corsair RME 1000W ATX 3.1 PSU, all of which was housed in the Corsair 3500X ARGB chassis. First up, we have Hitman World of Assassination. Against the GeForce RTX 4080 and the 5080, the 5070 Ti can't quite cut it. However, it does deliver great frame rates at all but 4K. Keep in mind as well that DLSS is disabled. But with it enabled, using the quality settings that I've chosen here would allow the frame rates to go over 60 FPS even at 4K. Compared to the GeForce RTX 4080, the 5070 Ti is about 6% behind. In Forza Horizon 5, again with DLSS disabled, using the highest possible graphics fidelity and 4X MSAA, we see the 5070 Ti falls short of the RTX 4080 by 5-6%. to Either way, with frame rates above 100, even at 4K, this is mostly academic, or at least doesn't make much of a difference in real-world terms. We then move on to Cyberpunk 2077, where I've used very taxing settings via DLAA, pass tracing, and of course, using the Transformer DLSS model. The game looks incredible, and of course, is largely unplayable for any GPU here at 4K, and probably wouldn't even hit 60 FPS with an RTX 4090, perhaps even a 5090. Either way, the RTX 5070 Ti here is about 4% behind the GeForce RTX 4080, which is a direct competitor of this card, of course, especially at the street price of 1,000 US dollars or 26,000 Rand. Next up is F1 2024. Using the ultra high preset, the highest RT settings available, and DLAA with no frame generation, the GeForce RTX 4080 once again pulls ahead around 6%. However, at 4K, it delivers the exact same performance as the RTX 5070 Ti. It's still impressive to see over 60 FPS as such settings and at 4K. We then have Dragon Age The Veil Guard. With DLSS disabled once again, and of course using the maximum graphics fidelity possible, again, we see the 5070 Ti trails the 4080 
for about 6% with the numbers being tied at about 4K resolutions and obviously higher. Next is Alan Wake 2, easily one of the most taxing games available on any platform today. Using DLAA, the high preset and no frame generation means that the 1080p is where we are looking at frame rates in the 60s. As before, the older GeForce RTX 4080 is around 5% faster, but we are talking about low single digit frame rate differences here. There's no resolution where the RTX 4080 is playable and the 5070 Ti is not. So while the differences are consistent with the previous titles, they are pretty much tied here. Finally, we move on to Marvel Spider-Man 2, updated quite a few times from the initial release, which was mostly problematic for many in terms of performance. That being said, with the settings used, we are looking at Alan Wake-like performance, looking at frame rates in the low 60s, even at 1080p. I've included the overclock results here in the benchmark as well, where the OC finally allows the 5070 Ti to pull ahead of the RTX 4080, and in some instances like at 1440p by some margin as well. Coincidentally, 1440p delivering around 48 frames per second is precisely where frame generation makes sense. And here you can see that with 2x frame generation on top of the overclock, we're looking at a more playable 74 frames per second on average, an improvement of about 37%. Interesting as well is that when overclocked, the Tough Gaming RTX 5070 Ti manages to mostly keep up with the GeForce RTX 5080 where the 1440p resolution is concerned, where the differences between the two is just 3 FPS. Operating at these frequencies, the RTX 5070 Ti, despite its high US dollar price, makes a more compelling case for itself, as it outpaces the GeForce RTX 4080 in every single game, which is what we see on the chart. Going back to Alien Wake 2, the overclocked RTX 5070 Ti manages to beat the 4080 across all resolutions, adding about 12% more performance against the factory clocks. We see this in 3D Mark as well. At factory settings, the GeForce RTX 4080 is a bit faster overall, but the overclock leaves the 4080 in the dust. Yes, the 4080 can still be overclocked, but not by the same margins that the 5070 Ti can be, and thus, it would still fall short of these results even with this overclock. However, before we wrap things up, I must say that in comparison to the 4080 and the 5080, the 5070 Ti Tough Gaming uses a lot less power, just 277 watts on average during gameplay, with a peak power draw that is lower than both the 480 and the 5080 during their average gameplay power draw. Where temperature is concerned, it's also superior here, peaking at 67 degrees Celsius. Impressive by any measure, and as a result, the GPU runs relatively quiet, in fact, very quiet, I might add. Overall, this is a solid showing for the RTX 5070 Ti. Out of the gate, it's about 5-6% to behind the RTX 4080, but with an easy-to-achieve overclock, it pulls ahead by the same 6% overall, placing it on par or slightly ahead of the GeForce RTX 4080 and its supermodel. As a direct replacement of the GeForce RTX 4070 Ti in the Ti Super, we are looking at about a 20% performance uplift in general. Not sure if this is worth it for people who are current 4070 Ti users, but if you are coming from a 3000 series GPU, then this would make a lot of sense and would result in a massive upgrade for you, even at somewhat inflated prices. Overall, there's not much more I can say about the ASUS Tough Gaming GeForce RTX 5070 Ti that the numbers themselves haven't told you. It runs quite, draws a reasonable amount of power for the given performance, and looks great in both black and white builds. The only caveat here is that for people outside of South Africa that are looking at a 1000 US dollar price tag, this may be a little bit too hard a pill to swallow. For us in SA, where it's available at around RTX 4080 prices, I think this one makes more sense than going with the 4080, despite the fact that the 4080 is a little bit faster for the most part, at least for now. Either way, let me know what you guys think of the ASUS Tough Gaming GeForce RTX 5070 in the comments below. And until the next time, please take great care of yourselves and peace.